hi loves welcome back to my channel and to today's video if this is your first time hi my name is Intiano. so today i will be telling you guys about the 16 books i read in the month of march so seeing how i read 16 books and i'm about to talk about 16 books i am anticipating that this video might turn out to be a long one so you know i highly suggest recommend that you know you grab your snack your beverage whatever it is you know cozy up and sit with me through the length of this video so without wasting any more time let us jump right to the 16 books i read in a month so the first book i read in march was an optimist guide to heartbreak by jennifer hartman and it follows this girl who when she was okay first of all she has a heart disease some heart disease of some sort um and then when she was little she lived in this small town um and she was best friends with her neighbors and they were a sibling duo right um a boy and a girl and she had a crush on the boy even though you know they were also three best friends and then she ended up moving after a while and then the girl out of the sibling duo ended up dying and so this book starts off when hope is grown up and she is moving back to this small town buying the house her best friends occupied before right and she's moving into that house she's also trying to like reconnect with the brother that she did have a crush on and all and it was a very interesting premise right that's why i picked this book up because i did expect you know it's a small town romance first of all um then with the way it was presented i expected that we would get sort of a grumpy sunshine troop and i also you know childhood best friends to lovers type thing was also very interesting because i was really looking forward to seeing the characters like bond you know over the trauma of you know losing someone they really did care about right um but none of that really happened in this book i mean we did get a small town romance but it really wasn't a small town romance it was just a lot of back and forth between the two main characters that is hope and her love interest um the grumpy sunshine part of this was very disappointing because uh <laughs> the sunshine part of things it was just really hope behaving like a two-year-old girl it you know a bit of an exaggeration but like she was really being just childish about everything and it was swept up under the guise of her being an optimist under the guise of her being sunshine part of the grumpy sunshine you know pairing and i just wasn't here for it also like i said considering how i did expect them to do some type of bonding over you know losing someone that was really close to them like grief together heal together type thing but that didn't really happen in this book right um it just felt really shallow and then when the author tried to broach, broach that subject it just started to feel very superficial and very artificial right it didn't feel as deep as the author was trying to make it deep because almost everything felt so shallow felt so surface level and then they would try to bring up the topic of this girl and it just felt like very without roots if that makes any sense and so i did not really enjoy an optimist guide to heartbreak by jennifer hartman i gave this book two out of five stars right then up next i read shopaholic and baby by sophie kinsella i think this is book five in the shopaholic series this is the first book in the shopaholic series by sophie kinsella i actually have read and i really loved it so it follows this girl becky she's a shopaholic right and then now she's pregnant and her gynecologist turns out to be her husband's ex and so this story you know following her adventures as a shopaholic plus all her you know uh do i say worries and anxiety as to whether luke is going to cheat on her luke being her husband with her with his ex her, his charming ex who looks so prim and proper who is intelligent who is a well sought after gynecologist while she is pregnant and her body is like changing and all those kind of things and the shopaholic series in itself is a very hilarious series there was a bit of drama to this one and i really 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 did enjoy it i gave shopaholic and baby five out of five stars i just really recommend the entire shopaholic series right up next i read the gentleman and the tape the gentleman and the tape is book two in the dread penny society series if i'm not mistaken by sarah m eden and the dread penny society series basically follows the authors of penny dreadfuls right so each book follows a different main character and most if not all of the main characters i'm assuming, I'm assuming since I have read only 
two out of how many books there are in this series i have no idea but um i think every single main character in the dread penny society series is a is an author of a penny dreadful and penny dreadful um because this is historical as well and so back then it just seems like literature was divided into proper literature and then the improper literature basically the penny dreadfuls right and some of these penny dreadful authors are anonymous right or they use aliases some are very well known and the dread penny society yeah they're the society of authors like i've said but they do use their proceedings for sort of the greater good of society the class of society that you know the higher class doesn't really bother with that they you know see as a nuisance and so they use their earnings from the sales of the penny dreadfuls to sort of help their consumers especially the more lower class people right especially the children the people that have no choice and that have been forced to um commit crime in order to be living and earn a living right and so i feel like the entire or the connecting plot line of the entire disjointed series that is the dread penny society is cracking down on this crime um ring this very deeply interwoven crime ring that seems to really be affecting a lot of the lower class people right and so gentleman and Tiff, like i said is book two and the two main characters in this are hollis hollis is a penny dreadful author who uses an alias of mr fletcher if i'm not mistaken and um he is from a family of high standing so yeah he's more on the high class but his family is on the brink of poverty basically because even though they have title they have name their family has had a gambling problem right and then he has this crush on this teacher he met in book one whose name is anna and she is a thief um that is very popularly known as the phantom fox so anna's family was um in the upper class as well but their family came into misfortune they were scammed and you know they were sort of moved down and during that period of them losing all their fortune and their good name and everything some of the higher class people took it upon themselves to take things from that family that they had no right taking and so anna being the phantom fox her entire goal is just to take back the things that people stole from them you know not the things that were giving away to pay debts right and so this is a romance between Hollis and Anna and it was a very easy read I really one thing that is charming to me about the Dread Penny Society rather is how clean like Sarah M. Eden I started reading her as an author because of her reputation for writing clean romances right and so it's just very easy very you know uh, middle grade romance type feels where he's just like we have Holly saying things like, oh, he he is lucky to be in her presence two times in two days, right? So that's just really cute and it was very easy. It was a little less and see down book one. I will say that I did enjoy book one a lot more than I enjoyed book two, but all the same, I still enjoyed it. And so I gave this three stars out of five stars. And then the next book I read was um, Blood Sanctuary part two and blood union part one which is book four and book five in the blood gray series by Bella Roth. so i've said before the blood gray series is a series that basically follows um it's supposed to be this type of romance between a vampire and a human but technically they are not vampires they are hesperines because they are immortal beings um that serve or worship hespera the goddess right um and I really love this series. I love this series. Although I will say that it's very obvious that as time goes by, you know, a lot of filler scenes are being added in. So especially for like book five, because we book book four, I gave book four a four star rating, but with book five, I had to reduce my rating to three stars just because this book here, over time, these characters have formed these friendships, these families, and you know, sort of this found family type of thing, this huge circle huge at the same time intimate circle of friends and book five just felt a lot like them spending time together and usually i will not have a problem with that if this was like the last book in the series or something but it just feels like 
there are still questions to be answered right there are still things that need to happen but it just feels like all this time we are spending with them spending time with each other it's fun to see it's very wholesome especially like seeing the main girl cassia have this sort of family around her seeing where she came from it's really nice and all but at the same time it's like can we get on with it like can we get on with this story i mean if it's the last book in the series the way it was for the addicted series with like some kind of perfect where it's just them with their life there's a little bit of things happening here and there that would be fine but like this is in the middle of what's supposed to be a seven book series right and so it's like we should be getting on with the plot and not be wasting so much time on you know sweet nothings right and yeah that was just my feelings towards it but all the same i really am enjoying this series i am seriously so impressed that i have read this series up to book five usually i'm fine with reading book one in a series if i really need to read a series and end it there <laughs> honestly it doesn't matter how much of a cliffhanger you know the first book ends on i just am not a person that finds myself reading a lot of continuous stuff so anytime i find a series that is able to keep me as hooked as this one has me i i really do appreciate it right so it was a fun time nonetheless i was a bit annoyed at times because like can we get on with it but i still really did enjoy myself so that was four stars for blood sanctuary part two three stars for blood union part one right. the next book i read is take a hint danny brown by talia hibbert so take a hint danny brown by Talia Hibbert was an interesting read to say the least so uh if you guys watched the video I don't think I've talked about Get a Life Chloe Brown on this channel but I did mention it in passing in the video where I talked about all the books I read in 2022 and I did say that it was a very disappointing read where I gave Get a Life Chloe Brown two stars based on my enjoyment of the book and yeah so i wasn't like so 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 excited to start what's it called <laughs> take a hint danny brown right so because i didn't really enjoy get a life like i thought i would enjoy it you know it's a very hyped series the brown sisters on every sort of look book platform bookstagram book to you you know you name it the brown sisters are really really popular and so i should i say i had a lot of expectations so going into this because of my experience with book one i feel like my expectations became lowered and as a result i was able to enjoy this more also i really did like zaf in get the take a hint danny brown a, a lot in fact <laughs> a million times more than i liked red and i feel like that just aided my whole enjoyment of the book but i did have some problems with it yes yeah, so um take a hint danny brown is about danny she is a phd student she is not looking for a committed relationship she's looking for like you know friends with benefits type relationship um and that's just because of how busy she is and so that she doesn't end up making her love interest feel like a burden feel like a chore or anything or she doesn't want to be hurt by somebody who cannot understand the importance her you know phd is at this moment in time in her life but then she has this um she's friends with this bodyguard at where she works Seth, and something happens they end up becoming uh, they end up entering into this sort of fake dating relationship which is really interesting right and so obviously from there feelings start to bloom and all i just think zaf was a really really sweet guy i, I think he balanced out you know um danny's rough edges if you will quite nicely like i said i liked zaf a whole lot more and you know that made me to really enjoy the romance in this book a whole lot more than i did the first book but my problem with this yeah is just that i feel like coming from danny's part the romance felt a bit too logical in the sense where we have her heart you know squeezing or feeling tight um when Zaf does things for her so maybe they were supposed to meet up and she sort of forgot or she fell asleep because she was up all night studying or making research or something like that and you know she expects him to be angry to be disappointed to be hurt and then he doesn't do that he shows common courtesy he understands where her priorities lie at the moment right um he is is 
the bare minimum <laughs> if i would do, if i would say so myself well it's not exactly the bare minimum but it's also not doing the most just him being understanding of her based on his feelings for her right and so he would like bring her lunch maybe i was supposed to go and meet for lunch but she fell asleep and so he would bring lunch to her and then it's like oh her heart squeezed um you know zaf to copy place in her heart just because he did these things for her and while it's fine for there to be logical reasons why you like somebody i also just feel like that shouldn't feel like it because i just felt like with the way danny's um pov the way it was being described her falling in love with zaf i just feel like it could have been any other person right who did the same things and danny would have fallen for that person then he would have liked that person right so that was just one of my major problems is that i felt a bit logical and then the second is that so this book here yeah, the relationship between two main characters goes from friends with one of them crushing on the other to a fake dating relationship here yeah, to friends with benefits and so with that you expect this sort of build up this sort of falling out especially with like danny's issues with not wanting a committed relationship and with zaf having a crush on her and so we're building up for this third act that i was looking forward to so intensely i was like on the edge of my seat the whole time looking forward to this book right um and i just thought it had a lot of potential they're falling out their third act like it was going to be cliche yes but the, um talia hibbert had built it up to do it so perfectly and so it was like we we're supposed to go up this bridge right where going we got to the point to just climb up this bridge and then we took a u-turn and it's like they popped the balloon the anticipation everything deflated right and then we took this u-turn and then it now led us to sort of another bridge so where i was expecting the third act to come up it didn't come up um and i guess that was an effort to not make the story cliche to make the character sort of original it was an effort i appreciated right and i just feel like okay if we kept on going that straight road it would have been fine but then they now had this actual third act that was just really like childish to me and was like you people cannot be serious right now because if you overcame this bridge this falling out this problem that was supposed to be a huge issue without um any hiccups if you went through that smooth and um smooth sailing i don't see why this particular falling out should be a problem and as a result i didn't feel any of the angst you know that you're supposed to feel during that period where usually most couples in romance they have this sort of breakup where you know they now finally realize that they really really like each other and can't be without each other so that part came and i was just like no i honestly seriously i am not convinced right um and so that was why all those two reasons uh why i gave this book three out of five stars um and then the next book i read was the ex next door by joe platt and the ex next door follows this girl whose name i can't remember for the life of me um and she is dating this guy they have been dating for quite a while they're even like sort of co cohabiting um and then she suspects him of cheating so they have a sort of argument about it but they don't get any closure because while they're arguing he sort of packs his bags and he leaves right and he's like oh call me when you're ready to talk about it and she never calls him back again and sometimes she's like left wondering like what would have happened if i called him if we actually did talk about this because that was how their relationship ended so like years later she's moved to a different place she has started or opened this um what's it called she has opened this art gallery if you will with this guy um and then some sometime in this story after she has moved to this place her ex moves in next door with his what's it called with his new girlfriend and so there are a lot of like um um on say things first of all they are keeping their relationship a secret from the people around them second of all it's like we never actually sort of got closure to these relationships and so it felt like there is a whole lot of lingering emotions that 
we really don't know what they are and so there was sort of a bit of tension to that and basically the story progresses from there i cannot say anything more because that is just really a spoiler to what happened in this book so for for the most part this book was really fun it was such a nice read like honestly i read this i think in one sitting almost one sitting like if i wasn't working if i didn't have to take breaks to do something i would have pretty much read this in one sitting right um but so we got to a point in a book where the author was hinting at stuff that will happen towards the end and it was like yeah i i could see this coming right and then it came and i just wasn't satisfied right i just wasn't convinced because even though the author has sort of hinted at this sort of plot twist towards the end even though we knew to anticipate it it came and while i was happy at the outcome happy at the result i wasn't convinced i feel like this should have been fleshed out more it just felt a bit rushed and the only reason i'm being vague about this is because obviously it is a spoiler <laughs> right um but if you are reading the book i feel like you would have guessed this thing i'm talking about and so what i'm saying is that when it came i wasn't convinced i you know it just like it made sense but at the same time it didn't make sense because it's like it, i knew it was coming but it still felt very rushed how it came right so that was a problem i had with this book and that was why i also gave this book three stars <laughs> the next book i read was um the cake shop in the garden by carol matthews which seriously okay i would say it was one of my best reads for this um this for march but honestly i think i know the book that was my best read for the month of march but this is coming in a second the cake shop in the garden by carol matthews it is um chiclet here so it follows this girl faye meriwether faye meriwether is a 40 year old or 41 year old lady woman she lives in this canal right she has a house near the canal her dad her late dad has a boat on the canal that has been sort of abandoned and so she's trying to work up money to save to you know restore it and experience canal life because she liked it but her mom and her sister are not so open to you know living on the canal they don't really like it in addition to that her mom is bedridden not because her mom is ill but because her mom has literally just decided not to ever stand up again right her mom has decided to be bedridden voluntarily and so we have Faye waiting on her Faye's younger sister Eddie is abroad and living a sort of life that is just not great and is always relying on Faye and she her sister is basically in this very toxic relationship and sometimes she needs money Faye would take out all the money from her savings give to her sister so and then she she's also pretty much engaged or has been in a maybe 10 year long relationship with her partner basically this guy who is very stuffy there's no sort of excitement between them he probably always just comes to her house to have dinner at night and gets cross with her when she doesn't cook that type of thing so it's just her life yeah she's running this cake shop in the garden and that's probably the best thing about her life at this moment <laughs> right um and where the book starts so she just has all these people walking around her and so she has sort of fallen comfortable into that lifestyle of not feeling excitement of not feeling appreciated for her hard work of really just not feeling and just going through the motions right but then this um guy um living in the canal i think his name is dan or something um he comes up he starts doing sort of menial jobs that she needs done around her garden they get to interacting you know sparks fly and it's not even really about the romance between them for the most part or for some part of this book because while the romance was really important we just saw Faye coming to realize that this comfort she has found with going through the motions it just shouldn't be right it shouldn't be and that she should be allowed to feel excited about her relationships with people her interactions with people she shouldn't just you know sort of see everything as a routine and all those kind of things like imagine a partner you have had for 10 years you guys don't really you know have interactions like it was just you could tell that something was missing right and through her 
interactions with Danny. Uh, yeah, his name is Danny Wild. She starts to realize that yeah, um, no, the way I've been living is not it. And I just felt like that was really wholesome. Plus, the relationships that were formed in this book, you know, between Faye and there was this um, there's this old guy Stan, the uh, Danny and her assistant at the shop. It was just really pretty to me like i really really loved it i was seriously so on the verge of tears towards the ending because it was so wholesome and so cute plus the whole reading experience was so easy was so cozy because most of the time a lot of things happening in this book was set against this backdrop of this garden um this cake shop in a garden this place where people living in a canal can come to have like sweets and pastries in this garden and it was just like really easy really cozy and i really really loved this book i loved it so much i, I have a vlog where i vlogged a vlog where i read this book will probably be in the cards somewhere when um the description below i'm sorry guys <laughs> got the code yesterday um so after the cake shop in the garden i read the bodyguard by katrin st katrin katrin Catherine Center, Catherine Center. Um, and it basically follows this girl. She works as I I know she said they're not actual bodyguards in the sense that their primary job is not to like fend off um people coming to attack or anything. I mean if the situation arises, then good, fine. They can handle that. But their primary job is to maximize the safety of their clients. So where they are clients are going because they work with like you know very famous people and also very rich people that might have targets on their back and so they you know sort of follow their clients closely and maybe if their client steps into a restaurant their job is to like survey the place for any sort of danger that might arise and be prepared for it or want their client of it type thing that is what their job is and so the main girl in this whose name after i forgot it um she is working in this security company she is dating her co-worker but then they have this sort of nasty breakup and the guy is just something else that i don't want to talk about um and and um she is then assigned to be the security detail for this um famous guy this guy that has been famous but suddenly went on a hiatus after the death of his brother right and so he's coming back after two years so she's assigned to him you know there's sort of danger um because of he has some stalkers and all um and the reason why he's coming back into the limelight basically it's just the fact that his mom is sick and he needs to be there for her and the will and there's no way he can do that like in on her thoughts when he's in hiding so he has to actually be there for her you know follow her to appointments type thing and so that is why he's coming back right um and so she is assigned to you know be his detail but because his mom is sick he doesn't want to worry his mom he arranges with the company that she pretends to be his girlfriend right so that they will not worry his mom about like him having stalkers or him being in just not to add to her stress levels well, she is ill and i think that was one of the main reasons i really love this book is because there was an actual reason <laughs> for them to fake dates <laughs> if that makes any sense like is a reason that is very tangible like most of the fake dating books now right now it's just like yeah let's just throw whatever reason in there as long as it's a fake dating relationship that's fine do you guys get what i mean but this one is like very tangible makes a lot of sense and you know i could really fully reconcile with this reason for them to be fake dating so obviously in the way they sort of you know <laughs> catch feelings right spending this much time with this person seeing into them seeing past their whole celebrity exterior um and then it doesn't help that her ex is always like whispering into her ear how um the celebrity guy would never want her would never like her she's not good enough type thing and so that's basically what this book is about it's a bit of a cliche story but i think we have somehow already established on this story on this channel even in this wrap up that i am a sucker for cliches as long as they are done well i seriously have no problem with cliches because there's a reason they became cliches in the beginning right um and so i did enjoy this book 
a lot like i really enjoyed it i have literally almost no complaint about it and i honestly couldn't tell you why i did not give this book five stars i gave this book four stars out of um five stars right so i can't tell you that oh it's because of this or because of that that i gave this book five stars because honestly in my mind when i was reading this book i had a lot of fun i had a great time it was just a really peaceful time as well um and i really enjoyed it i have no complaints i feel like this is one of those reads that you pick up if you're looking for something really easy and you know really light and fun at the same time with the right amount of romantic romantic angst is the bodyguard by Katrin center and then i read the wrath and the dawn by renee adier which is i reread rather is like one of my all-time favorite books i reread this book at least once a year i just really 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 love it the intensity of emotions this book does allow me to experience Every single time I pick it up is something I just really love. And so, you know, it was that time of the year I was feeling like it. And so I picked it up again. And that book is The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. So The Wrath and the Dawn basically follows this girl, Shazi. She has volunteered herself to get married to this king, their Khalid. Uh, did I say their Khalid? This king, the king of Ray right um and the reason she's doing this is because this king for a while now has been marrying girls and none of them leave to to see the sunrise basically they usually just die that night um and it's implied that he's the one killing them and so her best friend has recently been one of the girls that you know has been picked into this she was arranged to marry him and you know she died and so shazi with all this hatred in her heart is has volunteered to marry him and she has vowed that she will see the sun the sunrise and that she will kill khalid herself that's the name of the king and obviously i mean it's a romance i mean what i'm talking about here is a romance right um and i just really like this book for a lot of reasons first of all um right off the top of my right off the top of my head is how they came to a sort of understanding and not just like immediately you know going from this enemies to these lovers like without any sort of tangible reason i think how their relationship progressed is really one of my faves when it comes to like oh um i'm here to kill you type enemies to lovers right um i i say type because khalid really wasn't her enemy he just knew that something was up with this girl like why would she volunteer when she knows that every single person is going to die he sort of knew she was playing a game seeing how she saw the first sunrise right that type thing so he was like wary of her but it's not like oh she was his enemy or anything but he was her enemy right so i really like how they sort of came to an understanding how their feelings grew despite their mistrust towards each other and the whole forgiveness aspect of things or not even forgiveness but just a type of a very different sort of love conquers all message if you will that i i really like because usually now that everybody's like oh taking the moral high ground i think this is one of those allowances we can let go in a fantasy romance plus the intensity of emotions you know the wrath and the dawn is where we get quotes like my soul sis is equaling you where um you know khalid is like telling Shazi to destroy him when he actually finds out her actual reason this is a spoiler for for wanting to get married to him his reaction was chef chef's kiss and it's just like them loving each other to that point was just really amazing to me and obviously i loved my read this time around up next i read the beautiful by Renee Adie as well which I really did not enjoy so the beautiful is supposed to be this paranormal romance if you will it's about this girl she is moving to New Orleans right so you guys know how New Orleans is it's, it's the city of vampires basically especially with like fiction a lot of the fiction books you know interview with the vampire originals um it's just New Orleans right Mm, but she's moving to New Orleans, away from France, um, and 
coming from France, she has this secret, she has this traumas um that she has gone through in france and she's basically sort of running away to new orleans for sort of a new start but then she encounters this very mysterious boy because is i think it's a ya fantasy book as well so she um she encounters this mysterious boy and uh yeah it's, it's supposed to be a mystery thriller because there's a mother you know they are suspect and there's just a whole lot of you know mystery behind certain characters in this book even though to us readers it wasn't so mysterious and so this one i did not enjoy i if you have not watched my seven books in seven days vlogs i highly recommend you do because i talked a lot about the next few books or the next books i'll be telling you guys about in that video <laughs> um but this i did not enjoy because it's supposed to be a mystery thriller right so yeah, i'm supposed to be mystified i'm supposed to be thrilled i'm supposed to be on the edge of my seat guessing you know changing my guesses um not being sure of my guesses uh when it comes to like mystery thrillers right you want to be on the edge of your seat so that's what keeps you turning pages in the mystery thriller is that you want to get to the root of the matter you want to see who is the perpetrator you know all those type of things and this did not do it like other than um being um annoyed with the way the main character that is a girl who's never forgotten as well her personality was um presented to us in this book aside from that i really was just disappointed um by how i sort of like guessed predicted <laughs> you know knew the ending like if it was a romance and i'm predicting the ending or predicting what is going to be or predicting what the third act will probably be i'm just like yes fine it's a romance but this is a mystery thriller i'm supposed to be mystified i'm supposed to be thrilled i i'm not supposed to be predicting I'm not supposed to be predicting the end of this book, right? I'm supposed to be like on the edge of my seat. But the whole while, it was just like, I already know this is how this is going to turn out. So can we just like get to the end? Especially because I was now really annoyed with reading the main character. I think it was even only her POV. And then we also got one mysterious POV in this that I feel like just gave away everything in this book. Because that POV, we never told who the person was. But with the things the person was saying, like, so th that POV was supposed to be the POV that will make this book, build this book up as a mystery. Because it's just this creature with their ramblings in their mind and stuff. But I feel like that just gave away a lot of the stuff and made the book more of an open book to read, right? And then I think other than that POV was mainly the main girl's POV and I was sick and tired of being in her head, right? So I did not really enjoy The Beautiful by Renee Adie. I gave that two out of five stars and then next because i really liked the shopaholic and baby book by sub kinsella i went to read book one in the shopaholic series and that is confessions of a shopaholic which i really 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 did enjoy i loved it like i've said before i seriously would recommend the shopaholic series if you're looking for a hilarious read a hilarious series um something fun to while away time to get you out of a reading slum to get you back into a reading mood i think something funny will most definitely do that for you and so confessions of a shopaholic is obviously the first book in the shopaholic series and that's where we are introduced to becky as a shopaholic that's where we see her problems as a shopaholic they are seriously so hilarious and i love this one all the more because i saw how certain already established relationships in book five came to be right and i think that was really 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 interesting you know it also made me understand a lot of stuff that was happening in book five because in book five like like i told you guys we have becky like really um so sort of insecure not really insecure but anxious rather about her relationship with luke in the presence of his ex-girlfriend her gynecologist um and you know there were some times where i wonder like oh why would luke do so and so and act so and so way and not act so and so way but like reading this first book where you know we have seen them meeting and just seeing a little bit more of luke's personality outside being becky's husband was really 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 enlightening <laughs> to me right so i really understood things and, and i just really loved it i love the conversations of a shopaholic 
it was a great time and then next up next i read full tilt and all in by emma scott the duet so full tilt basically follows um this guy who has just had a heart transplant surgery and somehow he um ends up in this relationship with this um girl from this band that is about to take up that is about to blow up as a very popular band um and they they have this very sort of tender relationship right she has her past you know she sort of comes from a place of a lot of scars and stuff like that so the relationship here is very tender and all and that's all I, I think I can say about what this synopsis <laughs> of this book is about. But I will say that this book is a known tragedy, a romantic tragedy, if you will call it, full tilt that is. Um, I think it is the author also says says that in her author's notes before the book starts. So, you know, you might as well go in prepared. So, apart from you know liking the tenderness of the relationship between the characters i really liked how the topic of this book was handled how the entire message if you will of this book was handled um how the characters were allowed to make certain decisions that people would usually just feel like um nah there's no point because at the end of the day this certain thing is going to happen if you already is working on thinking about right at the end of the day this certain thing is going to happen so there's no point in trying to do this thing when having hope when trying to change it but i really like that because nowadays i really feel a lack of living vicariously through characters right because it just feels like characters now you know as a human living in real life it take risks at times but there are certain risks that you can't even entertain and i'm just like if we can't do that as people i feel like we should also be able to live vicariously through our characters and let them take those risks you know like i say live vicariously through them and it just feels like a lot of characters now are like really playing it safe there are certain risks that you wouldn't take as a human being so it's like characters also won't take that type of risk and it's like what's the whole point like reading is to experience you know a new world to travel to be in someone else's life that type of thing and so i really really liked that the author did that with this book it was also a very encouraging um sort of story and i cried a lot it's great any book that makes me cry especially like the angsty tears you know sad tears well not sad depressed tears more like sad romantic tears i love sad depressed tears type of books i'm just like please don't write those do you understand what i mean like books like a little life now i haven't read it but that's a book that's probably bringing about sad depressed tears now i'm not about that <laughs> so more like you know a book that is a book like full tilt it was really fun i really liked full tilt i gave it four out of five stars and then for all in all in i liked a bit a little bit less if you watched my seven book in seven days videos i did say how i felt like <laughs> all in really we could have done without it it did present an interesting situation it was fun to see the character the author explore the characters you know taking those type of risks you know it was fun to see them you know navigate that type of situation in the way they did navigate it in all lane but at the same time i just felt like it really wasn't necessary like the story would have been fine if it had, if it just ended at full tail those are my personal subjective feelings right and so because of that i gave all in three out of five stars right um and then up next i read the best the best book I read in the month of March. <sighs> it makes me emotional just thinking about it. Like the fact that I have read this book and I cannot go back to read it again and experience it again for the first time. It's making me feel certain things like that are not exactly great positive feelings like you know those books that they'll say oh books i'll sell my soul to read again for the first time not that i would ever literally sell my soul to read a book again for the first time but you guys get that this is one of those books 
honestly no jokes and the book in question is alone with you in the ether by olivia blade i love this book i seriously enjoyed this book i love this book honestly it was just such a beautiful exciting i loved it <laughs> like i don't even know where to begin to tell you guys about this book right i just and to, another thing that i think made me really enjoy this is that i didn't have the best of expectations so i'm someone that i'm going into hyped books nowadays i just really don't have the highest expectations simply because i have been burnt a lot of times if you will but like hyped books this book is so hyped i read a one line a one liner or i just see a lot of people screaming about it on the tl and then i go to read it and it's like what's going on like am i missing something are we reading the same book and it's just very underwhelming and so i was like a bit cautious going into this book but i loved it i seriously this book blew me out of the park i don't know what i was expecting but honestly this book gave and here's the thing i don't even know how to tell you guys what this book is about so i will really just tell you my favorite things about this book so when i was going in i read that prologue i was like oh my god <laughs> i read that prologue two or three times i won't even lie to you guys i was like what like what's going on i don't understand half of what this girl's in her musings are i have no idea what she's saying i mean i sort of get the general gist as to how because in the prologue basically we have reagan and her in her musings i think she's observing something and she's thinking about something and she's just using all these terms and you know coining her words in a certain way that is just like you have to pay very close attention and you know you have to it's like a very technical sort of thing but also at the same time a very flowery sort of thing right and so after reading it three times the takeaway from that prologue is that she's going through this thing that if um that she's viewing in this particular way while she's viewing it in this particular way you know she's intercepted by or oh, what would you know aldo have said about these certain things or certain things aldo has said in the past sort of applies to this particular thing right and so after reading it three times and that was my getaway from this I realized that going into this book, that was how I was going to have to understand the rest of this book. Like, I wasn't going to read it word for word and comprehend every sentence or every paragraph that was being written in this book. I was just here to sit, let my eyes consume these words, and sort of get the idea as to what this story is about. So, going in very relaxed, very chilled about it i wasn't trying to like you know um understand everything word for word i wasn't trying to read all the words in this no i really just wanted to see what the story between reagan and aldo was both their individual stories and you know their stories as a joint couple right and i feel like that was really what made me enjoy this book is the mindset that i used to enter it where i'm not trying to really be very overly critical about the writing writing or anything of that sort yeah so i think in a way that was one thing i really enjoyed about this book because it sort of gave me a lot of time to rest my brain um so it was i thought about that set that feeling in my seven books in seven days vlog where i read this book um and so it was fun and then the second thing i loved about this book was the quotes right so i saw somebody somewhere say this book actually the clockwork reader hannah is that somebody somewhere <laughs> she when she was talking about this book that was one of also the reasons i was very skeptical to read this she talked about how she felt it was very pretentious and i'm just like so spot on and then i just really feel like this is how you do pretentiousness <laughs> with characters or is it pretentiousness now or this is how you present pretentious um pretentious 
I don't even know the word, sorry you guys, I'm not an English person, I just happen to read a lot of books, but I just feel like this is how you do it, right? If you are going out there, you go out there, if you're presenting pretentious characters to us, present pretentious characters to us, where they say these things that it is so obvious that it is pretentious, like these quotes, these beautiful things, like things Aldo would say about Regan, and it's like, like I say, you have to keep on reminding yourself that it's fiction because it's like, obviously, people don't go around saying this type of thing. It's sort of like putting them on this higher ground of understanding and being very sweet-mouthed, if you will. And I really, really love that. I got to a point, I was just, it just felt like I was highlighting almost every paragraph of their, of their thoughts, of the things they were saying about each other. Like, it was just great the amount of quotes and especially yeah for Aldo I feel like another thing is that you know is is garbage in garbage out so one of the first things uh or one of the first lines I read in this book that made me know that I was in for a fun ride was when Aldo had this conversation with his dad in the beginning and his dad basically said to him his dad said um you you are brilliant tell your mind to be kind to you today and i just thought that was a really especially like given the way aldo is i just thought that was a really really pretty nice and just very wonderful thing to say to somebody right um and then seeing how that translates to the things aldo said about reagan you know it was just like very 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 sort of encouraging in that sort of way so yeah i really loved a lot of the things these characters were saying to each other about each other as well as thinking about each other and then the last but not the least thing i really loved about this book was how i think this book is the closest I have come to reading a montage where you guys know when you watch movies and maybe a couple get together and there's this montage of them in their happy times you know going on a lot of dates or maybe they are remembering after a breakup or something and it's just this montage of them you know participating in several different activities like almost like all at once if you will I feel like this book was the closest I have come to reading that type of thing because it is a lot to read right where you are not um seeing you know you guys know how montages are i'm not about to bite my tongue to explain this to you guys but i just felt like it was great that whole period where aldo and regan got together and she was having all this they were both having these musings about um how they felt about each other how the relationship was progressing where we had oh my god where we had regan saying things like oh she knew she was in love with him because they first because they fought that type of thing you know where there was something aldo said you guys that had me screaming <laughs> screaming what did he say oh i've forgotten if i find it i will put it up on the screen hi love so quick interruption just to read to you guys some of the quotes that i think were just really pretty and were just like so beautiful and it's like oh my god this is just fiction like it's honestly i was speechless right so the quotes i was telling you guys about were i'll do that i wanted to put up on the screen is basically where he's thinking about their relationship and how it's affecting him and he's going consumption that's what this is he is being willingly eaten alive or where she goes regan that is she goes the first time they fight she knows she loves him because she has never been with the fight before or when she or this paragraph where it's like Instead, she thinks, I love him, and for a moment, it doesn't matter whether he loves her back. It is enough to have known that the inside of her chest is more than a place for storage. And finally, where Aldo is like, if this is what it is to burn, he thought, then I will be what more a scattered ash than any of my unscattered pieces. And my goodness, you all during that entire period like when they just got together and newly when they let go of all their barriers and finally like entered a relationship i was just like yes 
yes yes yes like honestly it doesn't get better than this and see i loved alone with you in the aircraft it was great it was great i feel like oh, i have a lot of feelings towards this book i just feel like i can talk about it forever and ever but yeah it was such a nice one i really did enjoy it i can also see where some people will not enjoy it but that's it because we have to move on with the rest of this wrap up and then after along with you in the ether i read confessions of a good girl by joya goffney which i enjoyed for the most part so confessions of an alleged good girl by joya goffney is um about this girl she is a preacher's daughter then she is dating the drama at church and like the church elders and everything think like they are the perfect couple their deaths going to get married they are keeping themselves pure and all but you know behind closed doors they have been trying to have sex but it's not working like <laughs> the girl she is just like it's not working for her like she tries and tries at the time this book starts they have tried like 28 times and it's just not working um and you know they try for i think 29th time and then the guy breaks up with her that he's tired of waiting for her to be ready because in his mind is some sort of mental issue she's going through some sort of psychological fear she's going through and that she's not really ready and you know that's why you know they can't go any further right and so she breaks up with he breaks up with her rather and so she's like devastated because all this while she has pictured their married lives and everything and she's determined to be ready and you know to finally sleep with him so they can get back together and you know leave out the imagination she has in, in her head and also like not disappoint her parents right um her dad especially and so she goes to the women's clinic and somehow along the way in the story she discovers that she has this condition i'm not going to risk pronouncing that thing because i don't see i have a lot of pronunciations in my head that's like no so i will just put it up on the screen the condition that she had um and that is basically a condition that doesn't that makes penetration almost impossible by anything whatsoever right um and that sometimes it is just purely physical other times it is like actually because of like a way of self-defense from you know psychological trauma you might have faced or anything of that sort right so it was now interesting and so in that way the author opens up this whole should i say portal of you know educating her you know trying to make her realize that sex is not something to be scared of be like countering certain stereotypical things that are usually told to young girls about sex as a whole right and i thought that was really really interesting how the author handled this very very lovely like i loved it i was here for every single minute of that whole you know portal of education and getting her to just really be comfortable with herself and her sexuality as a girl right um i also like love the found family the friendship i won't call it the found family i'll just say it's a friendship right that she formed with reggie and sasha i think theirs was a really beautiful really heartwarming wholesome sort of trio um but what i didn't like about this book that now made me give it three stars is that okay um yeah we have tackled this issue with you you didn't know certain things before now you know about them now you know that your body is yours that you know no man has a claim over your body that type of education right it now felt like okay now you know these things you must immediately start applying them in the sense that oh my god you have never cursed before you have never said a swear word before right now right now is the time to like you must do it to show that you are comfortable with your body as a girl and it was just like stop 
<laughs> like it just felt like we're veering off do you understand like i understand that let's say they were coming from her friends that is were coming from a good place but i just didn't feel comfortable with the idea that for her to fully express that she was comfortable with her body she had to start doing certain things right so i didn't like that then i also felt like the romance between reggie and the sorry you guys i can't remember her name um <laughs> as you guys can see i can't really remember the names of a lot of my main characters but i just felt like the romance between her and reggie felt very logical in the same type of way where um is a whole lot of comparing between dom and reggie so reggie would do something and it's like if it was done he would have done the dom rather he would have done the exact opposite and so it squeezes something in her heart and it's just like if it's any other person that did the exact opposite it would have squeezed something in her heart in her chest Do you guys get what i mean so it sort of felt very logical in that sense but it was cute nonetheless and the last but not least thing that made me give this book three out of five stars was just the fact that um the ending <laughs> yeah there was this like sort of turn around with the characters and i won't say it was unexpected because i expected it it was i think i think it was like very obvious going into the book that this was the direction these characters were actually headed right i think that was pretty obvious but i when it came just like with the ex next door by joe platt i really wasn't convinced i was just like mm, it feels a bit too rushed i'm not really feeling it like i knew it was coming but it has come and it's just like nah i'm i'm not convinced maybe we should have fleshed this out a bit more maybe we should have you know given a lot more hints than we have given giving a lot more hints than we have given prior to this i just don't i was just like nah it didn't it didn't hit that spot those turn around like yes we knew it was coming but it's just like mm, something seems to be missing and that is why i gave confessions of an alleged good girl three out of five stars and that's my loves is the end of this match wrap up tell me if you have read any of these books that i have talked about if you enjoyed any of them or if you agree with any of my opinions on them um down in the comments below don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed to my channel i will see you in my next video bye